How's it going guys? We are back with another Yes Anthem video and today I am going to be going over some news that has been circulating through the social media by Ben Irving and Michael Gamble. It seems a lot of people are asking a plethora of questions and they are more than happy to answer them. So I've been going around looking at the tweets and seeing which ones are pertinent and which ones are important and bringing them here under one roof in order to bring you guys the latest in the Anthem news. So let's get started with probably the biggest one there is. The deceitful troll asked, is Anthem going pay to win? To which they responded, yes. It's a joke. When you give me that look, it's a joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, got you guys, didn't I? Well, jokes aside, let's get to the questions and let's get to the answers. Legendary contracts. Dallas asked Mike and Ben, what is a contract because people are saying legendary contracts and stuff and I'm confused. Mike Gamble took the opportunity to respond and said legendary contracts are repeatable dynamic endgame content which takes you out into the world to satisfy certain objectives. They are hella difficult. Not legendary, contracts are given to you earlier as an attempt to train you. So as you start the game and you progress through the game you'll be getting contracts of equal difficulty but with less rewarding rewards. However, as these are given to you, they're designed to get you into the motion and get you used to the notion of actually doing these contracts and how they're going to be done. When you get to the end game at level 30, you'll be getting legendary contracts. And once you get these legendary contracts, that's where the fun really begins and the rewards really pile in. Next, we have Forkboy Gaming asking, I thought I heard that as long as the storm has a shield that they can fly indefinitely. Once the shield is gone, then they have to land. Can you clarify or explain? Ben Irving said, We have changed some things. Right now, if you hover, you get better damage reduction on your shields. If your shields run out, or if hover runs out, you lose the extra damage reduction. So this just adds to the awesomeness of Storm even more. I mean, not only is it a glass cannon powerhouse with both AoE and single target, it's also now, while in air hovering, getting damage reduction. Pretty awesome. And it's pretty solidifying me as a Storm going into this. Just need to make sure my friend doesn't hear about Storm because I know he's going to want it more than me. He likes big explosions. Chance asked, do different damage types have meaningfully different properties? I.e. fire does bonus damage to armor, poison ignores shields, electricity always has a chance to stun, etc. Ben Irving said, fire is a dot, so it's a damage over time that constantly ticks. Frost is a frozen effect, so it freezes the enemies in place. Acid, to what they're calling poison, is a damage taken debuff, so it reduces their defense and allows you to do more damage during that period. And electricity is an AoE pulse that pretty much pulses and does AoE damage, and damages all within range. Pretty awesome stuff here. Next we have Carmen Perone. Just a quick question if you know the answer. Is squad play scaled by player count 1, 2, 3 or 4, or 1 and 4, meaning if you play solo and add one person to the squad, does it scale for two people, or does it bump the enemy scaling as if there were four like some games do in multiplayer? Ben Irving said, number of creatures changes based on two and four players. Creature health scales based on one, two, three and four. So if you're playing one or two players, you will get the same number of mobs. The moment you go to three players, the number of creatures that appear will be scaled to three and four players. However, the creature's health is scaled based on the number of players you got. So the more players you have in your squad, the tankier the enemies get. However, because you have four players, the synergy of your abilities, if done correctly, will actually mean you're gonna be burning through these a hell of a lot faster anyway. So this is both relevant and awesome, but at the same time, if you're playing correctly, you're going to find very, very quickly that going in with a team of four is going to be the way to go. This was followed up with Devon asking, any chance you guys can go into the details about the increased difficulties and what that entails? For example, is it just more health for enemies or is there more to it than that? Ben Irving said, it's mainly health and damage for the difficulty settings. When there is an elite or higher version of a creature, we tweak some of their behaviors, accuracy, dodge, frequency. So if any of you have actually played the game The Division, and I know I keep going back to this, but it is the most, I don't know, in terms of the actual game core mechanics, it's the closest thing I can find. I know people are comparing the aesthetics to 
Warframe and whatnot, but in terms of the core functionality of the game, it's very similar to The Division. So I do find myself going back to that more and more when I'm comparing. But if you have played The Division and you have met the Hunters in Survival or in Legendary Missions, that's basically what they're saying. Because the Hunters in that game are the have a unique playstyle. They're very difficult, their AI is very smart, and they're very powerful. So I assume that when they say they will be tweaking some of their behaviors with accuracy, dodging, frequency, and other stuff, I believe this is what they're referring to. Because when you're playing the division and you're going up against free hunters and you get outflanked, you do sit there and go, what the hell just happened? The next question that came along was from Plus Ultra. Do all Javanese fly at the same speed? Is there a difference in each class within the same class? For example, if you've got different armor on both ranges, will that affect their flying speed? Ben Irving responded with same top speed. So essentially, no matter what the armor you have on, mods you have on, or what components you have on, all Javelins will fly at the same speed. He followed this up with, will there be perks that increase this and or other aerial maneuvers, getting extra jump or boost? Ben Irving said, different handling. So what he means by this is either one of two things. One, each Javelin will handle differently, which is a no brainer, which is what I'm assuming. Or two, there will be perks that will actually enable smoother handling should you need it in terms of flying. Sean Machase asked, are there restrictions to the types of weapons we bring on a mission? Or can we bring like two sniper rifles? Ben Irving said you can bring two sniper rifles. Good luck on that ammo situation though, smiley face. And uh, yeah, this made me laugh. I mean, yeah, sure, you can bring two sniper rifles using the same ammo and uh, when you're running out of bullets, don't come crying to us, dude. Don't come crying to us. So the answer is, yes, you can, just don't do it. Steven Kovic asked, in Anthem, is there a way to inspect other players' gear or loadout? This is a really, really good question. It's one that I've actually become accustomed to in Destiny, where I can just walk up to a player and inspect what they've got. It's missing in a game like The Division, which would be even more valuable in my honest opinion, but it's missing and you can't do that. And it's one of the most requested features that was in The Division when it was in its prime. So the fact that it's not here is a little disappointing, but at the same time, Ben Irving's response was pretty promising. Not at launch, but we would like to do this. So at some point, I can see this coming in an update near you. Which is good, by the way, because I really would like this feature. Because if you see someone out there who's completely bossing everything, you want to see what they've got. You want to see how they're doing it. You want to check out their loadout so you can try and improve yourself. And this is a surefire way on how to improve yourself. So the fact that they are looking at a way to do this and searching for a way to get it done is spot on what I want to hear. Brian Graham asked, does the storm support Nexus also apply to itself? Nexus creates a field which provides gear cooldown reductions to teammates who enter its radius. And a simple answer from Ben Irving was yes. So everyone, including the caster, is benefited from this. Raphael asked, in the respawn restricted area, is there a timer to pick someone that's down before you can no longer pick them up? Ben Irving responded with, it's available until the party wipes or you repair them. Raphael followed this up and said, there should be a timer to be honest. That would just be too easy. Ben Irving responded, ha <laughs> ha. But it does get harder and harder with every teammate that goes down. And by this, I'm just gonna assume that not only will you be interrupted while you're raising, but you will also have to raise for a longer time while you're doing this. And obviously it's gonna get quite manic if you have three people down with one person up. Good response. And the final question that I wanted to share with you guys was one from Derek Jones. I'm starting on hard with a group of friends. Any advice? I'm probably the most legendary of all legendary responses from Ben Irving, get good. I mean, this guy is awesome. This guy is totally awesome. He gives no shits whatsoever. There is just like no given when it comes to this guy. It's like, just simply get good and don't be a scrub. <laughs> and well guys, that's pretty much everything for this video. I'll be collecting more social responses and getting more news as they arrive. If you have any questions or if there's anything in particular you want me to cover, leave a comment below and let me know. And yeah, I really do hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next Anthem video. Remain